so today is, is the last class on uh, image announcement uh, from the next week we will start a new topic so hopefully uh, today uh, we can uh, finish this topic and then uh, we will go for uh, another new topic so that will be started uh, in the next week shall i start now or uh, i should wait for uh, uh, more students to come you all can listen to me yes sir yes sir <laughs> so in the uh, okay let's start uh, let them join so in the last class uh, we were talking about uh, um, basic smoothing uh, special filtering techniques and uh, we have started uh, with uh, uh, discussion on uh, the dynamics of uh, basic special filtering and the mechanism from which uh, we can obtain the special filters okay and uh, when we were discussing about uh, smoothing uh, special filtering techniques uh, uh, we divided uh, the smoothing filters into two uh, sub categories so uh, first category uh, uh, first, uh, first category tells about the filters uh, which are linear filters okay and then we talked about the non linear filters so uh, linear filters uh, use uh, the strategy of linear combination in terms of sum of product of uh, the filter elements and the uh, image uh, uh, pixel values and uh, on the other hand non linear filtering techniques use the strategy of ordering static uh, order statistics so order statistics means we we first get the ordering of the pixels uh, within a neighborhood and then according to the operation uh, we uh, get a replaced value in the center of the neighborhood okay so here operations uh, operations means uh, the uh, smoothing operations like uh, image averaging and then uh, max uh, then mean okay adaptive mean so the uh, then uh, median so these are the operations so based on the operations uh, we can have a non linear uh, non linear smoothing filters so uh, so all these filters use the basic mechanism of uh, basic uh, smoothing filters okay or basic uh, special filters so that mechanism use uh, that mechanism uses a mask or a filter of 3 by 3 or 5 by 5 so according to the requirement we can uh, change the uh, dimension of the mask and uh, get a right uh, appropriate operation uh, for that filtering operation okay so today uh, we will talk about the sharpening uh, special filtering techniques okay so as we uh, know that uh, uh, smoothing special filters uh, uh, use uh, smoothing sp uh, special filters like averaging uh, image averaging use uh, the integration uh, technique integration technique means uh, this averaging techniques is analogous to integration so therefore uh, we can Uh, say that uh, the smoothing filters uh, use the linear combinations or the integration technique uh, in filtering but uh, since the sharpening filter special filters are uh, reverse operations of smoothing special filters therefore uh, we can conclude that uh, this sharpening uh, special filters uh, will be uh, used uh, will use the derivative operators or uh, differentiation uh, operators so this uh, differentiation uh, these derivative operators are based on the first order and second order derivatives okay and this first order and when we talk about the first order and second order derivatives in terms of uh, digital image processing so digital means all the values will be finite okay and uh, since uh, the sharpening special filters uh, are uh, implemented on a digital computer therefore the values will be finite and uh, the sharpening filters will be based on the first order and second order derivatives and this first order and second order derivatives are implemented in terms of the relative differences relative differences between neighborhood pixels okay so here we take the relative difference uh, uh, 
uh, when we implement the first order and second order derivative for getting the sharpening special filters okay so uh, initially uh, we will talk about the uh, first order derivative operation and then uh, we will go for the second order derivative operations so what are the different uh, so the objective of uh, sharpening special filters uh, is to highlight the discontinuities okay so sharp discontinuities in the image this is the objective of the uh, this is the objective of using uh, sharpening special filters now what are what are the different types of discontinuities that we uh, see in the image okay so we can have uh, different types of discontinuities so discontinuities like the uh, the flat segment okay so we can have the flat segment we can have ramp we can have step we can have isolated point we can have thin line we can have edges we can have, we can have corner points okay so this continuity is basically constitute the noises in the image okay so these are the different types of discontinuities so uh, the use of sharpening filters uh, uh, use of sharpening filters uh, on image uh, to get uh, to get the high, to get the discontinuities to be highlighted okay so uh, this is the basic objective of sharpening filters uh, which uh, highlights the which highlights the discontinuities in the image okay so these are the uh, these are the uh, discontinuities uh, which can be seen in an image now uh, if we apply the first derivative then and then uh, we can study uh, the properties of uh, the first derivative and second derivative operators in terms of uh, and data leverage processing okay now if we study the properties of first derivative uh, and the second derivative uh, operators then the, we can study uh, these two operators uh, or uh, this uh, two uh, uh, these two uh, techniques uh, in terms of this discontinuities now if we apply the first derivative and second derivatives on these discontinuities then what are the different effect uh, we can see in the image so that can be that can be realized by this uh, diagram okay so if we uh, if we apply the first derivative uh, on the uh, flat segment okay so flat segment here you can see the horizontal line uh, if we uh, take an image so on the left hand side you can see an image so this image consists of uh, some solid objects a straight line and a noise point or isolated point okay so this is the image and uh, we can get uh, a horizontal profile of this image uh, which is uh, given uh, which is uh, given in this slide here you can see that uh, the corresponding horizontal profile uh, along the center of the image and including the isolated noise point is given and then we obtain the simplified form of this profile the simplified form of this profile is given uh, the above of these two images so here you can see in the simplified form uh, we label the uh, gray, we label the profile by different gray level values okay so here we can see the ramp here we can see the isolated point here we can see the uh, thin line flat segment uh, which is horizontal line okay and we can see the steps now if we apply the first derivative and second derivative on the flat segment then the, what will be the effect we can see in the image okay or the values uh, how the values will be changed now uh, when we apply uh, the first derivative uh, on the flat segment uh, then uh, we can see that uh, it gives uh, it gives zero okay and if we apply the second derivative it also gives zero now when we apply the first derivative and second derivative at the beginning and end of the ramp and uh, step then what do we see we see that uh, uh, the first derivative gives the non zero value and uh, second derivative uh, and second derivative also gives the non zero value okay so here uh, at the at the beginning at the end uh, the first derivative uh, uh, gives the zero values okay and uh, second derivative gives the non zero value so uh, again if we apply uh, the first derivative and second derivative along the uh, along the uh, ramp okay then we get the non zero value for the first derivative and uh, zero for the second derivative 
so uh, second derivative is uh, more aggressive than the first derivative uh, however the second derivative uh, second derivative generates two different responses therefore uh, the second derivatives uh, are not very useful uh, for getting the sharpening uh, properties uh, to be highlighted in the image okay so our first choice is the you know, to use the first derivative operator since the first derivative operator gives the, the gives one response and uh, however the since the second derivative is more aggressive than the first derivative in some operations uh, we can use the second derivative operators however in most of the cases uh, we use the first derivative operators that is gradient okay and second derivative is known as uh, second derivative operator is known as the laplacian so uh, from this simplified form of uh, uh, this uh, horizontal profile uh, we can see at different point when we apply the first derivative and second derivative operators and then uh, we get the relative differences and these differences reflect uh, some properties uh, of using first derivative and second derivative operators on the discontinuities okay now uh, we will talk about the second derivative uh, operators for image enhancement uh, which is known as laplacian now this second derivative uh, second order derivatives for enhancement uh, uses the approach uh, uses the approach to uh, have a uh, derivative uh, in terms of uh, in terms of the pixel values given in the image okay and uh, this uh, second order derivatives for enhancement is called the laplacian now uh, this laplacian operator uh, uses the isometric uh, isometric property so isometric property means in every laplacian operator you can uh, you can see that this property is uh, this property is uh, found uh, to be intact uh, for every operator okay so what is the isometric uh, property the isometric property says that uh, the, whatever the uh, whatever the discontinuity whatever the direction of the discontinuities so uh, the discontinuities will be rotation invariant okay rotation invariant means uh, when we apply a laplacian operator on some image then we rotate the image we get the same result after having uh, the rotation first then uh, we apply the laplacian operator in both the cases uh, we will get the same result okay so that is why this uh, second order derivatives for enhancement uh, this laplacian is called the uh, rotation invariant and this property uh, is known as isometric property okay and uh, sometimes these filters are called isometric filters so isometric filters mean that this filter the this operator the, uh, the operators which are based on the laplacian are uh, rotation invariant okay now uh, if we apply the second order derivative uh, second order derivative on a uh, one dimensional function fx then, then we get the relative difference uh, relative, relative difference between the neighborhood pixels okay so this uh, uh, second order derivative uh, the second order derivative is uh, implemented uh, by par um, by using the partial uh, derivative concept so this partial derivative concept is used uh, so that we can get the uh, we can get the same representation uh, when we uh, talk about the two dimensional uh, functions fxy okay so initially uh, uh, we will we start with the one dimensional function fx and get the relative difference uh, in terms of the partial derivative del f by del x in uh, del f by del x in x direction okay and uh, that is uh, that is uh, given by the relative difference fxy uh, if x plus uh, one minus fx okay so this is the relative difference between neighborhood pixels and this gives us the uh, first uh, this gives us the first order derivative del f by del x and uh, from this first order derivative we can uh, obtain the second order derivative and uh, this both the first order derivative and second order derivatives uh, uh, are the linear uh, operations okay so what about the whatever the order of the uh, derivatives so all such derivatives are 
linear uh, linear op operations or linear operators but when the degree will be changed uh, then uh, or uh, if we get the square of this uh, partial derivatives then uh, then we can have the non linear form of the, the same function okay so when this uh, relative differences gives us the neighborhood uh, to be formed uh, uh, neighborhood to be formed digitally uh, uh, in terms of the pixels okay so uh, when we represent the second order derivative laplacian uh, we have to think about the discrete form of this function so what will be the discrete form so discrete form of these functions basically uh, constitute uh, the neighborhood uh, neighborhood uh, pixels and this neighborhood pixels uh, will be formed by getting the relative differences between the neighborhood pixels within a neighborhood okay so there will be a neighborhood uh, whether it is 3 by 3 5 by 5 or 7 by 7 whatever it is and uh, we get the relative differences uh, between uh, the center pixel uh, between the center pixel with the neighborhood pixels uh, which are uh, getting around or which which are found around the center pixel of the neighborhood okay so if we consider the second order derivative uh, of a one dimensional function fx then we can have f of x plus 1 plus f of x minus 1 minus 2 fx okay so this is the second order this is the second order derivative of a one dimensional function fx okay now laplacian can be represented by del 2 f and uh, uh, and Laplacian, and when we talk about the two-dimensional function, image function fxy, then uh, on two-dimensional uh, image function, we can have these uh, second-order derivatives uh, or Laplacian operator uh, as del 2 f uh, equals to del 2 f by del x2 plus del 2 f by del y2. Okay, that means. Uh, at the beginning we get a, uh, we get the x component in the x direction okay uh, for uh, two dimensional function fxy and uh, in in the next step we get the uh, we get the relative difference in the neighborhood pixels in the y direction okay so first we get the x component then we get the y component and then we combine this x component y component together and finally obtain the laplacian operator uh, for uh, second order derivative del to f okay and when you combine this uh, uh, when you combine the relative differences uh, which are found in the horizontal and uh, vertical directions so that uh, that had to be combined together and uh, we get the laplacian operator for horizontal and vertical direction okay so along the horizontal and vertical direction we get the relative differences so this gives us uh, the del 2 a uh, equal to f of x plus 1 comma y plus f of x minus 1 comma y plus f of x comma y plus 1 plus f of x comma y minus 1 minus 4 fxy okay so this 4 is the coefficient uh, uh, which is associated with the center of the neighborhood or center of the laplacian operator that means now uh, we can obtain the uh, we can obtain and we can obtain a laplacian operator based on this uh, uh, expression or based on this uh, equation del 2 f and uh, in horizontal and vertical direction okay now if we use the coefficient uh, for uh, the pixels in the vertical and horizontal directions then we can have one for all four uh, coefficient and minus 4 will be found at the center of the laplacian operator okay so here you can see the first uh, first image uh, in which uh, four coefficients uh, are found in the horizontal and vertical direction with minus 4 which is found in the center of the uh, laplacian operator okay and this minus 4 is associated with the center of the laplacian operator so this is one such laplacian operator where uh, the sum of the coefficient is zero okay so whenever we design uh, a uh, whenever we design a fast order derivative of uh, uh, a sharpening filter based on fast order derivative or second order derivative uh, then we need to test whether 
this filter is found to be uh, uh, found to be correct or not so how to uh, how to get that conclusion so uh, we need to we need to get the sum of all the coefficient values if this uh, sum of the uh, all the coefficient values is found to be zero that means the uh, design of uh, design of laplacian operator uh, operator is found to be correct okay that means whenever whatever the coefficient value it doesn't matter we have to uh, check whether it is logically determined or not if it is logically determined then uh, then uh, we can uh, get the sum of all the coefficient values uh, will be zero okay so for every uh, for every laplacian operator you can check whether the sum of the coefficient value is found to be zero or not if it is found to be zero then our design is okay otherwise uh, we have to uh, modify the uh, we have to modify the expression and according to the expression or based on the expression we get the coefficient value uh, in the neighborhood of the center of the laplacian operator and we get uh, some unique value for the center of the laplacian operator okay now we can extend uh, this operator uh, uh, along uh, left diagonal and right diagonal okay then uh, that means uh, when we extend uh, along left diagonal right diagonal then we get four more uh, coefficient value in the diagonal uh, neighborhood positions okay so now uh, there will be a four, there will be eight ones which are uh, found in the neighborhood uh, of the uh, center uh, coefficient okay and then center coefficient becomes minus 8 so this is uh, this is for the uh, this is for the uh, this is for the positive negative uh, center and uh, if we consider uh, the positive center okay uh, then uh, the center coefficient becomes 4 instead of minus 4 and again center coefficient becomes 8 instead of minus 8 when you consider the diagonal coefficient okay and uh, whenever uh, we uh, whenever we found uh, center coefficient positive then rest of the coefficient in the neighborhood uh, pixels become negative okay that means all the coefficient rest of the coefficient uh, become negative in the neighborhood so here you can uh, see the four different forms of laplacian operators which are uh, based on the, the second order uh, partial derivatives uh, so uh, so we can extend uh, we can extend this laplacian operator further by getting the uh, getting the more uh, uh, more sharpness or getting the effect of uh, more sharpness by subtracting or by adding the original uh, laplacian operator to the original image okay that means the input image so either we can subtract the original laplacian operator from the given input image or we can add the original laplacian operator to the input image so both can be done now what is the purpose of uh, subtracting or adding this laplacian operator to the original uh, input input image okay so the purpose uh, the purpose is to uh, highlight the highlight the compressed uh, properties uh, which are uh, embedded into the dark background okay that means the uh, gray uh, gray edges so which are not uh, which are not seen uh, when uh, it is embedded uh, in the dark background okay to highlight such uh, gray edges uh, we can either subtract uh, the laplacian operator from the uh, uh, input image or we can add the laplacian operator to the input image in both the cases uh, in both the cases uh, we get an output image gxy uh, and this gxy represent uh, two different types of images uh, which are found at, in the output okay the first uh, expression is uh, the first expression gxy equals to fxy minus del 2 fxy so this expression uh, we can uh, have if the center coefficient of the laplacian max is found to be negative okay in a, another expression gxy equals to fxy uh, plus del 2 f fx del 2 fxy uh, can be uh, we can have this expression if the center coefficient of the laplacian max is found to be 
positive okay so both the expressions can be used to highlight uh, highlight the gray edges which are uh, gray edges which are found embedded in the dark background and uh, this uh, two uh, these two uh, uh, these two expressions uh, gives two different forms of uh, output uh, images uh, which can be uh, which can be seen in this slide here you can uh, see an example so here uh, we are using an input image and uh, we get the laplacian filtered image and then uh, in the third image we can see the laplacian image scale for uh, uh, image scale for display purposes and uh, and the last image shows uh, the image enhanced by uh, using the operator okay now we can get the simplified form uh, of this laplacian operator okay what is the simplified form in the simplified form the center of the operator will have uh, will have uh, the value 5 or 9 okay that means uh, whenever we uh, uh, we get the coefficient value along uh, horizontal along horizontal direction and vertical direction then uh, uh, we can uh, have some expression okay and if that expression and the corresponding uh, relative differences if we subtract from the original image then uh, we can have the coefficient value 5 which is to be found associated with the center of the uh, center pixel okay and this uh, either uh, we can have uh, we can have the coefficient value 5 or 9 in the uh, center of the laplacian operator when we have 5 that means uh, we will use we will use uh, four negative uh, four negative ones uh, in horizontal and vertical direction as coefficient and when we have 9 uh, when we have 9 then uh, we can have eight uh, negative ones uh, in the eight neighborhood okay eight neighborhood positions but uh, if you uh, see these two operators carefully, you can see that the sum of all the coefficient, coefficient uh, uh, all the coefficient is not found to be zero. Okay. So uh, as uh, as I said that uh, the perfect uh, Laplacian operator will have the sum of all the coefficient zero. But in this case, uh, you can see that uh, the sum uh, is found to be either uh, negative or uh, positive instead of uh, getting zero okay so uh, this little modifications uh, this little modifications uh, we can uh, do uh, instead of you using the traditional form of laplacian operators in which um, the sum of all the coefficient is found to be zero so this uh, this simplified form of laplacian operator is called the composite laplacian mask okay composite laplacian mask so we can uh, both this uh, composite laplacian mask for enhancement enhancement means to uh, highlight the uh, sharpening properties uh, of the image or uh, discontinuities uh, in which are found to be uh, in the image okay so both these operators uh, composite laplacian operators can be uh, used for uh, announcement which are based on second order derivatives now uh, we will talk about the answer masking and high boost filtering in earlier days uh, printing technology uh, uh, printing press uh, use uh, printing press used the answer masking technique to get a uh, sharp image uh, of the given input image okay now if we consider uh, uh, to obtain if we consider to obtain a sharp image um, uh, from a blur image of the input image then we can we can subtract the blur image from the input image that means the original image the if, if we consider the original image is fxy and if uh, f dash fxy is the blur image then we can subtract this blur image from the original original image fxy and we get the uh, sharp image fs x comma y okay this fs x comma x comma y uh, denotes uh, the uh, sharp image okay and this technique is called the unsub masking in unsub masking we 
uh, we obtain a blood image and this blood image is then uh, uh, subtract from the original image fxy and uh, we get the uh, sharp image uh, after subtracting the blood image from the original image okay and uh, if you slightly modify if you slightly uh, go for modification of this answer masking uh, expression then we can have the high boost filtering okay what is high boost filtering so high boost filtering uses a constant capital a and this a is found to be associated with the original image fx1 that means at any point at any point uh, of the original image we can multiply uh, we can multiply the pixel value with the constant a okay that means a is found to be multiplied with each and every pixel in, uh, of the original image and then uh, we get uh, the blood image and blood image is subtracted from this uh, subtracted from this resultant event after uh, after multiplying the some constant a and get the high boost filtering image or high boost filtering operator okay and uh, if we rearrange this uh, expression uh, then we can have a for f h b x comma y equals to a minus one that is to be multiplied uh, with f x y and uh, we get another uh, two terms plus f x y minus f dash f x y okay so in place of f x y minus f dash uh, f dash x comma y we can uh, we can uh, we can have the answer masking that means the sharp image and this sharp image is added to the a minus 1 uh, fxy plus uh, this uh, fs x comma x comma y okay now this answer masking that means the sharp image is added to the original image uh, when the original image is found to be multiplied with uh, the con some constant a minus one, and that's that gives us the high boost filtering. Okay, so after rearranging the uh, expression which is used for the answer masking or uh, getting the sharp image, uh, we can have the high boost filtering. And uh, for high boost filtering, also uh, we can. Uh, uh, we can uh, have the Laplacian uh, operator or Laplacian mask, and and Laplacian mask can be uh, Laplacian mask can be subtracted or to be added uh, to the original image when the constant is multiplied. Constant is found to be multiplied with the pixel values of the original image, and this uh, this gives us also the modification of high boost filter. Okay, now based on this. Answer masking and high boost uh, filtering techniques, we can have two different operators. Okay, here you can see that uh, the three by three mask or three by three uh, operators uh, are uh, determined. Okay, in which uh, at the center you can see uh, we have a plus four or a plus eight. When we have a plus four, that means this a plus four is determined for the horizontal and vertical directions okay so therefore the vertical the the pixels in the vertical or the neighborhood positions along the vertical direction and horizontal directions will have minus one okay and at the center we have a plus four and if we uh, if we extend this operator for left diagonal and right diagonal then at the left diagonal and right diagonal neighborhood positions we will have four more my, uh, negative one okay four more negative ones and uh, when we uh, put this four more negative ones uh, at the diagonal neighborhood positions uh, we will get a plus eight at the center center of the uh, operator okay and the center of the operator uh, a plus eight is the coefficient uh, of this uh, uh, center coefficient of the of this uh, high boost filtering uh, operator so uh, we can have two different forms uh, based on high boost filtering or we can also uh, devise uh, two div uh, two different operator based on answer masking okay so here uh, in high boost filtering techniques uh, we are using the concept of answer masking uh, and that is uh, that gives us the sharp image and this sharp image when the sharp image is added to the added to the original image in presence of uh, 
in presence of some constant a then uh, we have uh, two different uh, operators uh, two different operators uh, with uh, a plus 4 and a plus 8 at the center of the operators okay here you can see the result uh, of some input image so this input image we use this input image so this is the input image for high boost filtering and then we can uh, see the effect after applying high boost filtering technique okay now we will talk about uh, the first derivative uh, first derivative uh, for image enhancement and uh, this is called the gradient okay now the now we will use the first derivative operator for image enhancement uh, which we call the uh, gradient operator and this uh, gradient operator uh, this uh, gradient operator is uh, represented by a you know, two dimensional vector gx gy and gx is called the x component gy is called the y component okay so uh, from this uh, gradient vector uh, we can uh, we can obtain the magnitude of gradient and this magnitude of gradient uh, is nothing but uh, nothing but the uh, either we can uh, get the magnitude of gradient by uh, get the root of uh, root under root under the gx and uh, gy uh, components okay so we can write this expression del f equals to uh, gx square plus uh, gy square uh, to the power half okay that means uh, we are getting this uh, getting the summation of x component y component under the uh, under under the uh, uh, root of this uh, root of this uh, expression okay that means uh, in place of gx we can write del f by del x whole square okay and uh, in place of gy square we can write del f by del y square now there is a difference between this gradient and magnitude of gradient when you talk about the uh, gradient uh, uh, gradient vector then this gradient vector is uh, the linear vector okay that's in linear operator but uh, when you obtain the magnitude of gradient since the magnitude of gradient is uh, uh, using the squaring techniques or uh, or root under square therefore uh, this becomes a nonlinear uh, operator and nonlinear operator uh, whenever we get the nonlinear operator or nonlinear form of the gradient then uh, that gives us the effect of isometric uh, property what is the effect of the isometric property that means uh, when you deal with uh, when you deal with the uh, the gradient uh, gradient of uh, gradient uh, vector then this gradient vector is not uh, uh, is not the isometric uh, vector because uh, this uh, this is not the invariant to rotation but when we get the nonlinear form this nonlinear form is found to be rotation invariant that means if we take the multiple of 90 degree it we may take the 90 degree or we may take 180 degree we may take 270 degree or 360 degree okay so in these four directions if we consider these four directions uh, uh, for this uh, for this nonlinear uh, uh, nonlinear operator magnitude of gradient then uh, we get uh, uh, then we can then we get the rotation of invariant uh, rotation of invariant uh, to be hold uh, with this uh, um, magnitude of gradient okay but for only for the gradient uh, vector uh, this uh, property uh, will not be hold but uh, for the nonlinear form of this uh, nonlinear form of this uh, vector uh, we can have the we can have the uh, rotation of invariant property to be hold uh, and this is called the isometric uh, property okay now when we uh, represent this uh, magnitude of gradient uh, on a digital computer so it is uh, found to be very difficult to uh, represent uh, this uh, represent uh, this expression or represent this uh, nonlinear form on the digital computer okay because we need to have some discrete uh, representation and based on the discrete representation we can obtain 
the gradient operators okay or magnitude of gradient operators now to obtain uh, such representation or discrete representation we can approximate this magnitude of represent magnitude of gradient uh, magnitude of gradient expression or magnitude of gradient representation okay so how to approximate so we can uh, get the absolute value of uh, uh, x component and y component okay that means whatever the whatever the value of x component y component whether it is negative or positive we always get the positive value and these two positive values will be added to get the magnitude of gradient okay so here we can write the del a del a equals to absolute value of gx plus absolute value of G gy and this gx and gy gives us the relative differences between the neighborhood pixels within a uh, within a uh, window or within a mask okay so here we can obtain if we represent the if we represent a 3 by 3 uh, gradient mask with nine different pixels g1 uh, z1 to z9 okay so here you can see the first row contains uh, z1 z2 z3 second row contains z4 z5 z6 and third row contains z7 z8 z9 okay so what is the center pixel here or center uh, of the gradient center of the gradient is z5 okay that means this nine pixels will have the pixel values uh, pixel values uh, of some image within this mask or within this window okay now we will use this pixel values to get the approximation of the magnitude of gradient okay so original magnitude of gradient expression cannot be used uh, uh, for, for getting the digital representation to uh, to have the digital representation so we need to approximate uh, this form okay and when we approximate this form we can have the absolute value of uh, x component and absolute value of y component okay and uh, finally we combine this x component and y component we get the approximation of this magnitude of gradient okay now when we represent a 3 by 3 gradient operator using 9 pixels z1 to z9 then using these pixel values we can have the approximation of the magnitude of gradient and that is given by and that is given by uh, the last expression here you can see that del f uh, equals to we can write uh, uh, we can write the absolute value of z7 plus 2 z8 uh, plus z9 that means the last row okay and uh, only coefficient 2 is multiplied with the uh, multiplied with the pixel value z8 okay then we subtract uh, z1 the, that is the first row okay the summation of the pixel values uh, which are found which are found in the first row z1 z2 z3 only difference is that 2 is uh, 2 is multiplied with z2 then we get the sum and this sum is subtracted from the sum of the last row okay that is z7 plus uh, 2z8 plus z9 okay so this gives us the x component okay then this x component is added to the y component similarly we can obtain the y component by uh, by subtracting the first column uh, from the last column okay while 2 is multiplied with uh, z4 and z6 okay so this gives us the y component now after adding the x component with y component we get the uh, magnitude of gradient and this magnitude of gradient is nothing but the gradient uh, the um, nothing but the gradient operator and based on this expression we can have different uh, gradient operators and this gradient different gradient operators like sobel operator previewed operator okay canis detector roberts operator so these are the different uh, gradient operators or sharpening filters which are based on the first derivative okay and uh, as i as i told you or as i said that uh, in most of the cases uh, whenever we need to apply the gradient operator or sharpening filters on the image we choose the first uh, we choose the gradient we choose the sharpening filters which are based on first derivative first derivative operator okay and uh, the second derivative uh, the laplacian operators uh, 
which are based on the secondary derivative operators uh, gives the uh, keeps a double responses therefore that uh, to that uh, laplacian operators uh, are not used for image enhancement but in some cases they can be used but most of the cases we use the gradient operators okay and these gradient operators these gradient operators uh, will uh, generate uh, a number of uh, sharpening filters like sobel operator roberts operator canis uh, detector preet operators okay then uh, so then we can have the different sharpening operators if we change the value of the coefficient uh, uh, value of the coefficient based on this expression then we can have the different form of this uh, gradient operators okay or sharpening filters so one such sharpening filter uh, you can uh, see at the bottom of uh, bottom of this slide there are two matrices here you can see this minus 1 minus 2 minus 1 which are given in the first row then three zeros given in the second row and one positive one two one these three coefficients are given in the last row similarly we can have uh, these three uh, two sets of different values in the first column in the last column and uh, uh, at middle columns will have all zeros okay so one one operator is the x component x component so this this is uh, this is called the sobel operator okay and in sobel operator we have x component y component so and on the left hand side at the bottom of the left hand side we can see that uh, uh, one operator uh, one operator the first operator is the x component and second operator gives us y component okay so now we can first we can apply the x component then we can apply the y component okay and when we apply the sobel operator uh, we can see the or we can highlight the discontinuities discontinuities like if we want to have uh, if we want to have to highlight the straight lines okay or edges or corner points or isolated points then we can uh, change the coefficient value in the sobel operator and accordingly the effect will be effect will be uh, appear or effect will be seen in the output image okay so here we can see here uh, we are applying the sobel operator to highlight uh, the to highlight the edge of this circle okay so first uh, image is the input image and the second image is the output image which is obtained after applying the sobel operator okay that means uh, if we want to highlight the boundary of this circle then we can apply uh, a number of gradient operators and now these gradient operators are nothing but the sharpening filters and these sharpening filters uh, are used to uh, used to highlight the discontinuity or uh, different discontinuities uh, in the image okay so here uh, uh, an example is given and uh, this example uses sobel operator to highlight the boundary of this circle okay any questions if you have any questions from this part you can ask me no question okay that's all so that's all for today uh, in the next week uh, we will meet on uh, wednesday at the scheduled time and uh, we will start a new topic okay yes sir okay sir